it's the wrong cat here from the realm, and I'm joined by Dark Steel. Hello. He is one of the authors of the Orbital Overhaul mod, and we're playing a quick uh, tester sort of game. I'm not sure if it's a test or just a playthrough. We've got uh, an army here, a few realm members, and some randoms mixed in as well, and we're going to see how this plays. I've got Dark Steel in here to sort of talk us through the differences between the Orbital Over Overhaul mod and Vanilla. As you can see, the system that we've got here in front of us is very, very heavily orbital orientated. I suspect that may have been intentional. <coughs> we've got this nice big gas Maybe. giant nice here big. in the middle, surrounded by lots and lots and lots of moons. Lots and lots of Hallies as well on these as well. That'd be good. So, we're we'll just waiting for the players to spawn in. Um, where are the players spawning? They can spawn, in fact, on all six of these moons. Um, Anywhere they want. We've got more than six players, of course, which means we're going to have at least one moon with more than one person on it, but the uh, the odds are stacked in favour of two or three of these moons having confrontations early on. This is a free-for-all, so we just have to wait for everyone to spawn in, then we can get going. Have a little quick look around the solar system. These moons all seem to be largely identical. The ones closer to the gas giant a little bit larger. That music there means that our players have started spawning already. I'm just looking at where these explosions are. Looks like we've got four active moons and two inactive moons. Let me just have a little quick look in here. On this planet here, we have Merid 4 all by himself. That could be a oh lethal boy. one a bit later on. And then, oh my, on this planet over here, we have got two of the random players started right next to each other. I'm going to just deactivate. We have three groups of players who started right next to each other, actually. That is very Merid's unfortunate. Merid's all by himself, and everyone else spawned adjacent to someone else. These two players here go have a nice little fight to the death. And it looks like the green players are taking the upper hand here. Although the turret now taking... Well, this is going to go either way, actually. Both players have made some mistakes early on, which they really ought to have avoided at this point. Okay, let's zoom out again have a little look at some of the other planets, because there's more confrontations, you say? Yep, pretty much every planet except Merids has a concentration going on. All commanders spawned right beside each other. Now, who made this system? I feel like they may have made a terrible mistake. Um, I did, but I also put it on uh, people spawning ever or spawning er anywhere as well. Oh so. wow, so that's a bit okay. You took a bit of a chance with that, and it didn't pay off. I don't know, kind of entertaining. <laughs> We don't get to see much of the orbital stuff from these dead players, unfortunately. Dead players. Oh, with Merit on his own, we will see a lot of orbital, don't Mayor worry. Merit, of course, is our orbital tour de force. I'm interested to see what's going to happen. Oh, was that an explosion I heard there, or was that just me zooming in close enough to hear some rumbling? This blue commander no, here is very, very low. I think if that wall disappears, he's for it. The wall is about to just get whittled down, and the shot's going to come flying over the top, and he's going to get... Oh my god, what the single shot came flying through there and just chipped away what was left of his health. The yellow player needs to be a little bit more aggressive here. Those bombers are not going to get through because the command has a very powerful anti-air weapon which can easily take down undefended bombers in that fashion. Grenadiers, long-range bots. Let's have a quick look from the yellow's perspective. He can't actually see the blue commander. Now he can. Those grenadiers can just get in range. A couple of shots is all it's going to take. God, that's close. I think the blue commander is not long for this world, unless he can get out a much larger force of bombers than that, but he's not going to be given the chance to. All it takes, he's going to do is just whittling him down one bit at a time. He's down to 3% health. I would have put out some booms if I was yellow. Just I would have, I would have just moved him behind the air factory so that the grenadiers also target the factory first. That would have been saving him all this damage, down to 3% still. This is going to be a very, very slow force. I came across here because I thought it might be a bit more interesting. A little bit more interest over here between the purple and the green players. We have a pelter up from the purple player destroying the green base slowly but surely. Green player not doing very much to react. It's even crazier for orange and white because they've actually got a whole bunch of units starting to fight some just a giant chain of walls. Oh, well, let's oh, see what, what planet are they on. Uh, I'll ping it. Oh wow, okay. We've got a nice little conversation. The commander's on the front line there. I'm not sure. He's taking damage. I don't think he realizes he's taking damage. You can see in the bottom left there that the health bar is slowly whittling down. One or two percent at a time. He has some fabricators repairing there. Always prime. Perhaps not the wisest move. The commander is very, very expensive to repair. The Inferno's getting in there, licking him. The walls are getting in the way, saving him just about. But they're getting in there nice and close. We've got lots of shots flying over the walls. Where is it going to the Inferno's? And there we go. We have our first death of the game. Always Prime knocked out by Prox. Prox is actually a very, very good player as well. So Always Prime was in a very difficult position there. 
Very aggressive play from Infernos though. We don't get to see Infernos very often, but in that particular situation, they proved to be very useful indeed. Being able to just walk around the wall there and just lick him to death with that flame. I think, yes. if I recall correctly, the yellow and blue player over here on GR47. I was indeed correct. Same as the other guys have a bomber snipe, but there's not enough bombers there. Oh, are there? oh my goodness! Torek has he just been bomber snipes! I was I honestly that surprised. That was so that. close. That was so close. He was down there by a, a fraction. Wow. Look at this commander's health. Uh, actually, yeah, I'm hovering actually, over his hovering health bar and it's showing 101% health. I think health. He's that's what it's showing for me too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, think he's at 1%. Kind of, I would say probably 1%, but that looks like a glitch. That's, oh, that was such a close fight. This commander needs to do something to repair himself. And we have a player disconnecting and reconnecting. I believe that was the person who just died. Yes, most likely. So let's have a little look here. Merid 4 over here, all by himself uncontested and he's got an orbital launcher coming up already so tell me a little bit about uh, what's what's actually been changed in the orbital layer since we're about to uh, to reach that stage of the game now well there are a few things that were really changed in the orbital layer um, mostly the basic kind of changes where we kind of decrease the cost of the orbital um, launcher so not not by much but a little so we can get it out a little faster um, we also um, changed a few orbital um, units that were that were previously units into structures. So the um, the um, power satellite and the uh, orbital uh, the advanced orbital radar are now structures instead. Okay. Um, then we also have a bunch of new units buildable by the orbital factory. Um, so we have four new units, I believe: the uh, Hailfire, the Excalibur, the Hammerhead, and the Wraith. Um, as a kind of an overview of the units, um, the Excalibur is kind of a long-range anti unit and structure railgun ship, kind of like a frigate from the Halo series, has a big railgun kind of weapon down the middle. Um, the Hammerhead is kind of an anti-fighter escort. It shoots down wraiths, uh, phoenixes, and uh, avengers pretty easily, but doesn't do too much damage against anything else. Um, the... <clears throat> excuse me, the... Uh, uh, Hailfire is kind of your standard anti-ground bomb and anti-air bombardment ship. It um, has tactical missiles against uh, ground units and shoots uh, AA missiles at just air units flying uh, flying below it. And it has a small uh, radar vision of the surface, um, not too big though. Um, and the Wraith is kind of an advanced scout. It is able to um, destroy any incoming tactical missiles from the surface because um, that's in vanilla as well uh, it was originally a separate thing but they did actually add that into vanilla now so we didn't need to we just removed <laughs> our mo mo uh, units from that file for our unit files for that so it's just like vanilla now um, and it's also has a very weak weapon it's mostly just an advanced scout with an anti-tac support weapon basically um, though it does have radar stealth, if the opponent doesn't have any orbital or and deep space radar up, uh, it will be able to hide from any ground-based radars. Right, you are. The uh, the basic radar is still a mobile orbital unit that can sort of zip around, isn't it? Yes, yes, it's that's just it. a basic radar. So that's what got. Yeah, Merritt's here. got one here. And what he seems to be going for is uh, a little something which we haven't seen for a while since the balance changed. There's a Vanguard drop, an Astraeus-based Vanguard drop. He's building a load of Vanguards and a load of Astraeuses. It looks like he's about to try and combine the two, which could prove could interesting. Prove interesting. Yes, I think it will. Um, the Astraeus is definitely cheaper than it was before, and I think anyone who's unprepared with uh, the Umbrellas is going to be in for a big surprise now. Though, to be fair, Umbrellas are more cheaper now, and I believe they have a bit faster fire rate, so they do do less damage. So they're not as effective against the uh, larger orbit, the new orbital units, but they will pack more of a punch against the smaller ones, the Wraith and the Avenger. And any um, Astraeus, of course. It looks like Merritt has plonked a uh, an orbital radar, an archive, on top of Protz's planet. He can see that Protz is there, all by himself on the planet, and Merritt knows Protz, and he knows that he is going to be the main threat. So he's probably scanning at this planet, thinking, "Ah, oh, here's where I'm going to start." In fact, I can see a load of uh, Astraeuses now flinging around the gas giant. I suspect I know where they might be going. I'm going to quickly check. Prox, yep, check. Prox. Prox has not built an orbital radar yet, which I find surprising. Uh, it is, in fact, Tech 2, however. 
It is, is it? Ah, oh, so he's not actually yes. managed to reach the second tech layer. So, oh, okay, so you've actually pushed the orbital game into a bit of a later phase, like almost like into so, the yes. third tier of technology. We would like to um, have a tech one deep orbital radar. However, there is a current issue with just the way it works, in which um, if you have a deep space and orbital radar, it ha gives vision of everything in transit between planets and every orbital unit and planet uh, around planets anywhere. Uh -huh. And there's no way to change that or balance it, so we moved it to T2 we have a bit of an to uh, prevent uh, unfolding uh, here. Yeah, uh, Merrin uh, has just dropped five vanguards into Protz's base. These are exceedingly nice. heavily armored, very very hard hitting, short range units. As soon as they get near your army and your base, you really need to pay a bit of attention here. Those fabricators are going to be toast in a second. Those massive uber cannons are just blasting through. He's mobilizing as many forces as he can. He's just been further there to defend. He will be able to defend, but not without losing all of this power. This is an absolute brutal, devastating blow to his economy. The vanguards are still not dead yet. They are not done here. That army got far yeah. too close, far too quickly, and they were just able to unleash a brutal area of effect uber cannon on the entire bunch of them, significantly reducing their DPS output and their ability to kill the vanguards with too much damage. A huge chunk of base gone there. Prox's economy now, actually, Prox was doing very, very well for his economy initially. Uh, if you look, the metal is still going strong. However, his energy is down to 6k compared to the 50 And with those of orbital Mary. fabrics, it's not going to help. Orbital fabricators orbital use, uh, how much are they using at the moment? I believe they use just as much as they do in vanilla. We haven't changed too much about them. Okay. But he's now going to be really, really hurting for energy. That just took out his entire cluster. That was a fantastically placed vanguard drop there from Merit. Intentionally or not, I'm not sure if he had the intel to scout out. That was exactly what's happening. You can now see here, queued up from Prots, he's building another cluster of energy. If I were him, I'd be spreading out a little bit more this time, because now he knows what Merit is capable of. And Merit's economy is, of course, going to start becoming uh, exponentially larger because he's taking control of this gas giant very early. These jigs, have, yes. have, you, have you adjusted the jigs at all? Yes, actually, they do no longer explode violently. Um, however, instead, what they do is they cost a whole bunch of energy to maintain. Oh, they, they cost energy instead of producing energy? Yes. So these are and basically so now metal, you have to use makers. the uh, orbital power satellites, which got a little bit of a buff, so they're equivalent to um, Tech 2 plants now, but they're immobile. So um, you're going to have to use so a combination of solar arrays and jigs, almost like, yes. uh, a, a, almost like the sort of metal maker from Total Annihilation or um, the mass fabricator from Supreme Commander. Exactly. That's an interesting take on it, actually. I quite, I quite like that. Because it adds a bit of vulnerability. If you take out the power, then you just completely drain all of their power economy. Can you toggle them on and off, the jigs? Um, I believe, well, th this is kind of an exploit, but I believe there is currently a bug where if you toggle them off, um, they still give you metal, but they don't drain any power. That don't tell anyone in the game currently, but we'll hopefully <laughs> we'll fix the, we'll just take away the toggle ability for the uh, next update. Okay, that, that, that would be an interesting sort of mechanic if you removed any ability to toggle, because then that introduces that vulnerability there. You don't have to destroy your jigs and the investment to be able to restabilize your energy economy if they just focus down on yes. energy satellites. Yes. That adds some really interesting tactics to the, uh, to the play there. There's still one planet still here one being planet. fought over between purple and green. It's a war of attrition. It looks like a bit of pelter creeps happened here. Purple just sat here bombarding the outer regions of green's base. Green not really doing much against it. However, on the other side of the planet, Green is doing a brilliant job of expanding here. Uh, and I'm he's got a bit of a tech force here. I'm surprised to note that the, the economy is not that different. Green, I'd expect to be significantly ahead in metal because of how much he's expanded. It looks like Purple may have had the uh, superior spawn here by spawning next to all the metal points. I can see some more activity in the orbital layer. Another Astraeus. Is that going to the... That looks like it's probably going back to Proxus planet, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like it is carrying vanguards. So let's have, has Protz built his orbital and deep space radar yet? Has he even reached Tech 2 yet? He has. Uh, he appears now. to have reached Tech 2 and he's just about to finish his deep space radar. Ah, there it is. Yes, you're quite right. I didn't even spot that. There it is. And there we go. And, and there, there goes, goes the, the anchor. Not the anchor. I, I don't know. I meant umbrella. That's what I meant to say. It looks like he's also building one of our new satellites, the Sentinel, the anti-ground, uh, anti-army Sentinel. That's it's not Sentinel. very good against buildings, but it's definitely very good against large groups of armies and this is mobile. mobile it is not it is a structure is it? here I'll ping it my combination is for the change camera mode there we go look at that now I can just do this and we can get a good look at the artwork on this bad boy 
Uh, who is, who's responsible for the artwork on this? Um, that would be... The textures are done by MG Metal, who I believe is still in the game. Uh, he's, in fact, green in the game. Um, and the model is done by uh, Nick B1. Um, Nick, who is, in fact, a very talented model or modeler. He's done all of our models. Uh, well, did he do all... Yeah, he did do all, all of our models, I believe. It's not a fantastic job. It looks just like a you know what you'd expect the vanilla unit to look like. Yes, uh, it does. Uh, closely based, I think, on the model of the solar plant, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it is fairly heavily based on that. Yes, kind of a mix between that and the um, Arcid. Now let's have a quick look back here at Mero's base. Merid has turtled up heavily on this planet. There are umbrellas everywhere. It's going to be a very, very tough nut to crack. It looks like he's chosen deliberately chosen the smallest planet he can. Uh, because those are obviously easier to defend. The range on the umbrellas is quite wide. Uh, having a small uh, planet like that means fewer umbrellas. There's, there's a commander being destroyed over here. We just missed one being annihilated. I'm going to chrono cam that quickly because I like seeing commands explode and why. It looks like Blue's command. Down. What killed that? Was that a merit drop? Oh, maybe? I'm. he may have been the one who disconnected. Ah. It looks like it, because this is a very, very idle base. Yeah, that was an AFK timer going off. Oh, that's a bit more boring than I was hoping for. He wasn't 101%. He shouldn't have given up that easily. He was invincible at this point. <laughs> looks like Merid's locking down even more control on the gas giant. And the purple player has actually just sent away an Astraeus, I've just seen. I'm not sure where it's gone to. One of the unpopulated, of the unpopulated planets, planet? perhaps? Yes. It was gone here. There it is. What's he got on board? It's empty, isn't it? I'm not sure. That looks empty to me. Uh, it appears to have a combat fiber on it. A combat fiber? You may be looking to build a teleporter. I believe those are still buildable by combat fibers. Are they now? They're not buildable by the uh, orbital fabricators. You have to actually get a foothold on it now to be able to build a teleporter there. MG Metal has in fact built, or built sent I should say, an archive over this planet as well. Just to yes. see what's going on. I just whoa! I was inside the gas giant for a moment there. That was that was an experience. Oh, blimey! What's that? We had another disconnect. Yes, it looks like purple is disconnected. Terra demon. Oh, that's unfortunate. They obviously got bored because they didn't quite realise. I don't think that what we had going on here, which was a little test game. Oh dear! Oh, it looks oh. like Merritt has built one of our uh, new. Ground based defenses, the Tesla Tower in the How's middle of his now? base. Let's, let's have a look at that, shall we? Ping that for me, thank you. Right, let's have a look at you. This is a very interesting defense as it protects against tactical missiles. Tactical missiles. Just like the I sniper feel? bot. Um, it is also a generalist uh, defense, a good, good against air, well, not good. Uh, it can hit air and ground units. It doesn't have a very good range and it has kind of a low damage. It's, it's bots and it's good against um, air units but any tank can outrange it and easily tear it apart. But its main purpose is for um, protecting against tactical missiles from the hellfire and such. Now, I'm seeing a teleporter here from Merritt. I'm interested to know where the other end of that teleporter is. Because it's not on Prox's planet. No, I believe he has tried to claim an unoccupied planet. Yes, so it's he has, here. So it is. And he's uh, surrounding the orbital layer with um, a minefield. Mines. And he has some anti-air satellites as well. Are they new? They added uh, yes, mod. we have added those in. So they are, um, they, they act just like... Model, yeah, currently, yes. We're waiting for uh, Nick to use his amazing modeling skills to make a new one. Orbital mines. Are they visible to the opponents? Um, if they have an advanced... Uh, or if they have an orbital and deep space radar, yes, they are. That is Which is unfortunate. <laughs> oh, looks like Merritt has a um, land... Our new anti-orbital railgun. There it is, yep. Okay, that looks like it was maybe, possibly taken from the Pelter model, I'd guess. Um, a little, yes. A little bit. Oh, that looks, that looks absolutely fantastic. Look at the detail on that. Nick yeah, they did a very good job, job with it. Right down the cannon, right down the barrel. Yep. That is absolutely lovely work. I believe Merritt has some of the new orbital units on the gas giant here, or has he moved them off? He has some hammerheads. He had some Excal Oh, I see. His Excaliburs are attacking. Um, Excalibur. Oh no, he's got his hammerheads attacking. No. What are the hammerheads? Um, what are the hammerheads? Go through those again for me. Uh, those are good against. Against what? Sorry. Against what? Sorry. 
Uh, Avengers and Wraiths and Phoenixes. Oh, this you poor can see them tearing factory. up the squad of Avengers here. Oh wow, they are very, very effective against Avengers. Yes, however, they do pretty much die against most other things, and they're not very good against structures. No, I can see that. That's, see that's that taking that. a very long time to get off that structure. This hammerhead is actually coming in here single-handedly and taking out all the rest of them somehow. Yep, uh, because it has a bit of AoE, and it is uh, able to hit. It has oh. two weapons, and it's being assisted by anchors. However, here come Merid's Excaliburs. You might be able to tear those things apart. Wow, look at those. Take a close look. They're very nice. Very nice. How much? These are just orbital railguns. Yep. They don't quite fire straight forward though, at all times. That's yes, we're, it's a weird bug that we can't seem to fix. They don't seem to turn towards their targets, so we have to give them a bit more of a yaw. Oh, I just so you know, I've actually just seen a, a, a Facebook post, believe it or not, from Mike Robbins, Saurian, that he's just done some changes to the pathing system, which could be interesting in terms of what you can do with that. You might find you've got some angles to use. That might be interesting indeed. As you can see here, this lone Avenger is doing a fair yeah. bit of damage oh. to the <laughs> to the Excalibur really before taking before it takes it down. I can see how a swarm of Avengers would easily overpower those that low fire rate because they've got no yeah, AOE. It's a very very precise shot like that. It just takes out one Avenger, and the other two just come in there and finish the job off. Yep. Although they're not quite. There we go. He's gone. This is adding a load of variety in the orbital layer. All these different types of units, rather than just a single uh, orbital combat unit, which the Avenger was the only combat unit that had the orbital layer. Having all those different things really does add quite a lot of depth to the uh, orbital experience. That said, it Prox does. seems to have completely forgone that in favour of building lots and lots and lots and lots of Avengers over his base. Which will not help him if Merritt or anyone else comes in with lots or a fair bit of uh, Excaliburs. Or Hammerheads. Or, sorry, not Excaliburs, yeah. Hammerheads. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, you're supposed to know this. You've made the mod. I'm not supposed to be able to know the names of the units before you do. <laughs> I'm a hey, stupid sometimes one. Sometimes it mixes up, okay? I have to build these things all the time and keep changing the balance. Unfortunately, it seems like our purple friend is still AFK. His base is being obliterated by bombers. There's not a lot he can do because, hey, all he's got is hey, one anti- I say that, he's got an anti-aircraft tower, which is going to take out probably a good chunk of these bombers. And his commanders have that AA. And for some reason, the green player did not target that AA straight away, which he should have done. He's lost a lot more bombers than he needed to. Indeed. I have a whole bunch of tanks sitting outside, which now appear to be moving in for the kill. I do feel a bit bad for these fellas, because I'm not sure. I, I, to be honest with you, I think that the lobby system does need a little bit of an upgrade in terms of the fact that making it very, very obvious you're joining a modded game. I don't think these guys have realised what they've joined. Yes, I don't think so either. Well, I do feel a little bit sorry for them, but at the same time, I'm excited to see what Merritt does to Prots, because he's so far ahead at this point. Look at... I mean, look yeah. at that, I, I say that, Prox's economy isn't doing that bad. He's actually managed to rebuild all of his power. Yes, I wonder if he's taking advantage of... Oh, he is taking advantage of the new uh, orbital uh, power satellites. Let's have a look. Oh, is this the same... What, the, uh, the It's the same race? model, yeah. it's just it, you, buffed it, you know, is actually usable. And these are, no, these are no longer mobile? No, they're in fact built by the orbital fabricator. Okay. That's good. I like that. I approve of that. Oh, look at that and the orbital map in the corner there. What have we got there? Hammerheads and Excaliburs. Many, many, many of them. Yeah, it looks like they're coming in for uh, the kill on Prot's um, gas giant base. Let's have a little look. Let's watch this from the cinematic view, because I like the cinematic view. Christ, look at that. That looks so good when Jig explodes. It does, and they right can do right. Uh-oh. I think... No, that's my internet lagging out. It's okay. Yes, it does do that later in the game. <laughs> Jesus, that is absolutely amazing to watch. Charging through there. No defense whatsoever. Well, he does have a whole bunch of uh, anchors, but those aren't going to help him against no. the Excaliburs uh, there. And then you've got the Hammerheads just coming in to sweep up as well. Yeah. That is oh, here come amazing. the Excaliburs from behind. Or the Avengers. Yeah, Avengers versus the uh, Excaliburs are quite lethal, but you've got those hammerheads there to defend. He got them too close to the hammerheads and they yeah. got taken out. And there we are. Banking around, coming about. 
what's left. Oh, what's this? We just missed something on the other planet. planet. It looks like Prot's yeah, died. Prot's, yeah, Prot's just died. We missed it because we were busy watching other planets. Did he just quit? No, I think he just got sniped. I don't see what happened though. He wouldn't have rage quit, surely. He knows what we're playing. Let's chrono cam that. Oh, that's my social bar. Whoops, that's the chrono cam. Back 30 seconds. Okay. Prots. Looks Prots. like it's just Merit and MG Metal now. Oh, so Prots has nuked himself. Okay, he did. He rage quit. I don't know why. He could have actually come back. I'd have loved to see some more fighting between uh, Merit and Prots. Yeah, it would have been very interesting. So, MG Metal should know what he's doing, right? In theory. Yeah, I don't think he's going to do very well. He was pretty far behind. He's yeah, just getting yeah. his Tech 2 up now. He's. I think um, MG Metal is one of these people who are fantastic in theory, but it's it, coming down to it, you have to be able to apply the theory in an in-game environment, which is a lot harder than most people think it would be included. And there we go, another yeah. little assault. We get to watch this one in the cinematic view. Oh man. Uh, we've got uh, Hellfire up from MG Metal, but it's not going to do him any good because it can't shoot other orbital units. Those like Scallopers have a fantastic range on them. They do, yes. Oh wow, they seem to be missing that fabric. Oh come on, you can get him. This is going to take one shot. There it goes. There we go. Now we've is Amir going to drop in his uh, er, his Hellfires now? Hellfires. Or does he not have any yet? I don't think we've seen any Hellfires in the field. I don't even know what they are yet, so that's the thing. I'd that's like to thing. see Merrid use an SSX to kill, finish uh, MG Metal off. Those things have a very good new particle effect now. We've got loads of Avengers inbound in the orbital layer, just looking again. Oh, there comes some Hellfires. Oh, he does have an SSX! I can see it there. Oh, I can see it there. there we go. Let's see, what we, let's see what arrives in the orbital. I think MG Metal probably knows what's up. Let's have a look at this from his point of view. He doesn't have a deep space radar up. Oh dear. Oh no, dear. he doesn't. This isn't going to go well for him. So he's getting that Faber out, though. He's going to die blind. Blind and angry, I'd imagine. So let's see, Merid is now maneuvering above here. Of course, he has complete vision over the base. He doesn't know, he only has radar blips so far. He doesn't know where the commander is yet. That won't take long though, as this army starts to move over. What's he got there? Has he, got a, he must have a satellite in here somewhere. It's moving now across the base, yeah. Commander identified. He's found some umbrellas though. That SXX had really poor landing placements. There are umbrellas on the surface of this planet which can deal with this massive armada maneuvering over his base. Indeed. He hasn't got the orbital vision. So he's actually got a whole space navy stationed over this. Can they even see? They can't see to shoot. They can't see what they're shooting at. It's no, it doesn't seem they can. Oh, there we go. He's just, he's just got a vision. He's just got vision. Ah, oh, so he's, he's out of, oh, he has got a radar. He was out of power. That's what it was. Uh, yes. Probably all those, back, uh, back online. The umbrellas have burst into action. Uh, they take a long time to kill those hammerheads. I'm not gonna lie. I feel that that maybe could. I think the umbrellas maybe need a bit of extra health, extra damage maybe. Um. However, you do also have to consider that there are the lancers, which can pr effectively one-shot any of these new. Um, Larger ships. Oh, there we go. We've got some building building one here. happening here. Hailfire. Hellfire, rather. Yep. The Hellfire, you can see, is quite effective. Much more effective against structures, but it can still do well against armies. Look at those go. I believe Merritt's going to try to use this tactic of overloading the, um, Umbrella's targeting systems with the uh, of targets provided by the Avengers, and then let the SSXs explode um, MG Metal. 
If he is, then we're going to be in for some great fireworks here. Absolutely. I'm just sat here watching from the perspective of the tanks as they get bombarded from orbit. There's absolutely nothing they can do. They're trying to run away. But these are homing oh, missiles. Here come the Avengers making their screen. He's actually, Merrin has just sat his entire Space Navy right on top of those umbrellas and taken it all. I mean, I know he's probably on, it, on oh, the here, come, here come the Hellfires, look at them go. That's oh, a commander, the SXX's. SXX's. Oh wow, I'm going to go and chrono come back because I missed out on that. They came in at the bottom of my screen. I must wait until yeah, the, game, the game's wait. finished before I can use the uh, chrono cam. Oh, come on, come on, game. Stop doing this. <sighs> I know the game is complete. That's why I'm trying to chrono cam it. Q. Okay. Catch up. There we go. And there we go. Commander's sat here. SXX is inbound. Uh, any second now. I've gone back too far, haven't I? The planet just maneuvers in front of my face. <laughs> I believe you'll really enjoy the particle effects. Sponging. Merrick calls for another in my Steam chat. See the shadows of this XX there. Oh wow! Those are huge! Yes. That massive explosion there. Yep. The SSX is now a reusable nuke. And it costs about as much as one as well. It doesn't do as much damage, but it has a bit more of a area of effect. And it's very good for taking out bases. Uh, however, it doesn't kill the larger structure is very effectively just on its on one SSX on its own. You might have to have two to effectively do that. But it is reusable and movable, so you have a pretty good effect with that. Well, I have to say, that's my first time actually watching a whole game with the Orbital Overhaul mod enabled, and I really, really like the changes that's made to the game. I think that is a fantastically dynamic orbital layer, because you've got the unit variety there, whereas I think, by contrast, the vanilla is very much a case of build this to counter this, build this to counter this, build this to counter this. Yours has a lot more fluid in terms of what composition you can have. Because as I said, the only mobile destructive unit that you have in the orbital at the moment is the Avenger. Yes. Whereas you've added these much more specialized roles, the tanky AoE dealing thing, which is very similar to a slightly tweaked version of the Inferno or the Vanguard from the vanilla game. Um, yep. And then you've got the Lancer, which is like your sniper bot of the orbital layer, and I think that actually just adds a lot more flavour to it. That was really fun to watch, whereas orbital games usually just a case of who's got more Avengers. Yeah, we basically went into this mod saying, well, you know what, Avengers versus Anchors is never fun, especially if you have a gas giant in the system, and that just becomes a case of Avengers spam, and that's really boring. So we went and just basically just added a whole bunch to the orbital layer, and kind of our goal was to do like make a fun game without changing vanilla as much as we could. Like with the the least we we wanted to make the least amount of changes to vanilla as possible, and I think we did do that fairly well. I believe the only real changes we made were the tactical missiles, and then Uber just implemented that into vanilla, and we also changed tallies and catalysts. So tallies are now four times cheaper. Um, how or or no? They are three times cheaper. They have half as much health, but and you need four of them for each Halley slot. I'll tell you what. Thank you very much for um, sort of co co commentating on that game with me. I, I'll I'll do. I'll put a download link for the mod in the description. I'll link to the forum post and the PA mod manager stuff. That'll all go in the description of the video. If you've watched this and you like what you saw, go and download it. That looks awesome fun. Yes, Exodus Esports has an article on it too. You can take a look at that to I'll get an leave, overview of most of the that one as well. All right, thanks for uh, casting it. Lovely, thank you. Yeah, have a good day.